a zaraz trochu historii. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Comrades, your podcast all about the FX show, The Americans. I am one of your comrades, Jesse Jackson, and joining me is my fellow comrade, Allie. Hey, Allie. Hey, Jess. How are you today? I am great. Good, good, um, good. You're not a little scared about some bacteria in the air, maybe? <laughs> uh, you know, I'm a little nervous. I'm a hoping that I've got some antibiotic, and uh, I'm also, yeah, I'm also, <laughs> you know, uh, trying to convince my father to help out an old girlfriend. Exactly. But don't know if that's going to work out for me. <laughs> um, we are here to talk about um, the fourth episode of the fourth season of the americans and Allie and i just worked on this it's chlorophenical that's the name of it thank you for saying it yeah (laughs) (laughs) um we are um this is a really good episode um it's deep it is for lack of better words it's deep yeah um and it really gave us a lot of great um talking points you know half of the episode was almost a bottle episode cuz you're just in Gabriel's um you know apartment mm-hmm. but then the other half is in Russia so um so I'm going to start uh, out uh, with and and wait and, yeah. and 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 Martha Martha Oh Martha, yes we Martha's do have Martha too man. yes oh so we have not talked about this yet as we've made through this. So give me your feelings on Nina. Oh, Nina. Conflicted. Daddy issues. Yes. <laughs> Just kind of lost. You know? I mean, mm-hmm. go, I mean, even when she was having, the, you know, her full-blown, quote-unquote, affair with Stan, you know, physical yeah. affair. You know, it was it was really awkward. Yes. I mean, let's be real, you know? She, you know, and um, she's wanting a man. She's wanting a father figure. Every man that comes into her life, you know, you see her with that, you know. She's gorgeous. She's, you know, she's just this hot Russian chick, you know. And she's, you know, she plays it. She plays into it. And um, I think she's a, I think she's a lost little girl. You know, really. I I really have enjoyed the character. Um, I find um, I will go right out there. Annette Manadu, Manadru, uh, the actress, is stunningly beautiful. Oh, she's beautiful. I mean, just just she is exotic looking, and the accent. Yep. I. Oh. Uh-huh. Oh. Listen, yes. I'm completely straight, and yes. I think. That she is just as a woman, just yes, naturally stunning. Yeah, Hot. she is. And Hot. you know, and then you know, and like uh, in earlier seasons when you know oh. she's there and she's smoking, she's a bad girl. Yep. I just I have ooh go yeah. <laughs> way to go. Um, and you know, M- Matt and I had talked about um, in the first couple of episodes that she is one of our favorite characters. And we had wondered what they were going to do now that she had gone back to Russia, how they were going to keep her on the storyline. And um, and I got to tell you, um, this has been pretty – you know, they handled this really well. They and, did. And it was it's so powerful. Um, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, Allie, did you think Gabriel was going to die? No. No? No. 
only just from the fact that they're not killing off Frank. Okay. You know, I think that his character, even the small, I mean, he's just a recurring player, technically. Right. But I think what he brings to the screen, I think when they, I think he went in season one or two, I think he went to do a Broadway show and he didn't really commit to this for um, a long time. And um, they had um, another fabulous actress. Um, Margo. Yeah. And, and just, you know, come in. And I just feel that, you know, besides, you know, um, Elizabeth really not getting along with her. I just feel that they, they tested the waters a little bit and they really needed, they need him, yeah. you know, just for what he's doing. And I think, you know, it, you know, if you can tell, if you feel the backstory with him and the mm-hmm. Jennings, you know, they've been together a long time and right. it shows. And I really do think he cares to some extent, you know? Yes. I really do think, I mean, he of course cares what the center says, you know, and he's always the center to the center of the center. But on, on another way, I think he looks at Philip and Elizabeth as his kids, you know, so I didn't think they would kill him from that perspective. Now, anything's possible. You know, sometimes we yeah. never, you know, you and I have discussed The Good Wife before when, like, Will just got killed, you know, whatever, in season yeah. four, and nobody saw it coming. Right. You know, of course, they could have killed him, but I don't yeah. think they would have. And and we will talk about who they might kill and how who they did kill oh. uh, And in this thing. Um, I thought... It was amazing, you know, you've got, you know, you have your, you know, you've got Elizabeth, you've got Philip, and you've got William all there, you know, back and forth. Um, You know, Elizabeth's starting to get sick, and she's worried about, you know, what's going to happen, and she's all of a sudden – her mother gene starts showing up and you know and we have talked about in the past um you know elizabeth is all about the cause yes and mother russia and doing the sacrifices and philip is a little more i think engaged in the family and is not as um dedicated at least that's my opinion. What do you think? No, I mean Elizabeth uh, Philip is going through this. You, you know he's being westernized. Yes. You know he really is. You know he's book. You know they've been here. What what do they? What do we think? Around twenty two years now. Yes. Twenty one years now. He's becoming westernized. He's becoming an American in a lot of ways. Them him being an est and all of this and you know, trying to um, find feelings, his relationship with Martha, like we touched on a little bit, you know, yeah. which is a, such a completely polar opposite, you know, um, relationship than the one he has with Elizabeth for so many reasons. And I think he really has learned or not learned. He has really kind of fallen or not fallen. He has really come to love Martha, you know, in mm-hmm. some way there is a love there, you yeah. know, and, and I think, you know, his character is, you know, seeing things now through his children, you know, mostly Paige and her, her complete, you know, um, heartache, so to speak, in all of this. And her, um, like I said to you in the last episode, her contempt when she looks at them, you know, it's just pure contempt when she looks at them and it's breaking him as a, as a man, not a Russian, Mm -hmm. you know, not a spy, but as a man, as a father. And he is just there. He's just becoming more aware. Yeah. You know. Do you? What do you think is their? What is the state of their marriage in your mind right now? Philip and Elizabeth. Yeah. I think when we watch this episode, this this you know like them put in this you know situation for you know. 36 hours, 36, you know, 48 hours, you know, when, um, um, with this whole glanders, you know, whatever it is. And, um, and her getting, which we didn't know at the time, was it a a, a adverse reaction to the antibiotics or was it truly her getting, you know, glander, you know, getting sick from this, this bioweapon. Um, and, you know, you see her dreams, you know, happening and her reverting about, you know, and yeah. and you see Philip watching her, you know, you see it. 
And it's like you're watching, you know, kind of this, I care for this person. I love this person, you yeah. know, Philip looking at her. Like, I think I, you know, it's like, I think I love you. You know, like, it's yeah. like, a, like, a ah, mm -hmm. moment, you know, and I'm afraid I'm afraid. And then when Elizabeth has a couple of moments of clarity while she's, you know, again, ill, and we're not sure exactly at that point why she's ill. Yeah. And she looks at him, you know, just deadpan on and says to him, now you can be an American. Yeah. You know, it shows that she sees it. You know, she sees this whole thing. And I think their understanding that they've had, you know, as agents, as spies, you know, for all these years, um, even though they made two children, you know, you know, and they and they did all this, you know, um, I think they're starting to understand each other. I think they're starting to possibly accept each other. You know, maybe not like everything, and nobody ever does. I do not like everything my husband does. Yeah. You know, and I, I've known him and loved him for 25 plus years, you know? Sure. I do not, you know? Right. And I think, though, you're seeing this with them, you know, right now. And I think, you know, it's like, you know, any social experiment, you know, when you put people together locked away for an extended time, you know, um, things happen, good or bad. And I think that's what we witnessed a little bit of like of, um, you know, Big Brother watching them. You know, we were Big Brother. Obviously. I, I agree, <laughs> Allie. Um, and I apologize. You know, we're we're playing catch up, so we may be blurring episodes. But I, I like the fact that when he told her about his, you know, going uh, to the est or whatever. Oh, I thought you were going to say something else. But well, yeah, <laughs> this a lesser written show would – you would have had two or three episodes where she's mad at him because he was lying to her or something. But they're not about that. No, they aren't, are they? No, because that would be a real relationship. Yeah. Their it, their relationship was not founded on like, yeah, love, respect, mm -hmm. attraction. Right. This is – Elizabeth, this is, you know, Philip, and you two yeah. are going to do this. And right. their sense of country, you know, especially Elizabeth's, you know, yeah. okay, this is what we're going to do. Yes. You know, so, so you know, you know, I mean, they don't have that. It would be odd for them to be quarreling, fighting, you know, her bitching. Oh, can I say that? Yeah. Okay. Her bitching to him about that. You know what I mean? That would be so far out of that. You could see Martha doing it more with Philip than Elizabeth yeah. and Martha. Oh. Yes. Um, she has, this, this is a good episode for her as well. And, you know, you think about it, what a weird, <laughs> she knows, how... like Elizabeth knows he's going and he's sleeping. Come with... on. Remember the episode she said, please have sex with me the way you have with Martha. Yeah. Come on. That was kind of a turn on. I can tell you. <laughs> Absolutely. As a guy, I was like, wow. You know? Yeah. Not only. I mean, yeah. But that again shows you mm -hmm. what their relationship is built on. Yes. You know? And. She doesn't. She's not that woman. And I. Mm -hmm. um, she is pregnant with his child. Oh, very cool. It's interesting, right? Very interesting. It is just, I think it's. Um, they will never have a, you know, convention. conventional. Yes, because, um, but it is very, I think the affection they have for each other has, it developed into its own kind of love. Yes. Um, I think. You can love a person without being in love with them. Yes, but I think, I, I, I think. And maybe I, I'm sure it's the romantic in me that, you know, they're they're finding true love together. Um, interesting. Uh, did mm -hmm. um, did you think um, I loved William's kind of snarkiness, which oh, Baker still in place that well. He's so good. Yes. He's so good. Yeah. 
You did gotta you love find, him. Did you find it out of character that Elizabeth changed her mind about them not killing Pastor Tim and Alice? Um, no, I think it was an evolution of her. You know, I think, you know, I think she's looking at Philip a little bit more with respect as him being a man, mm. him being the husband. You know, I don't think that was ever there. And I think she's like, as she asks him, like, like when they're there, what does S tell you about death? You know, mm-hmm. what does S tell you about this? You know, she's actually interested. You know, I think maybe she's fascinated. Maybe she's disgusted. I don't know. But, you know, she's this, you know, this staunch, you know, Russian, you know, you know, my grandmother was Russian. And and, and I see a lot of similarities. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. They're a certain way. And I think she's just now seeing Philip in a different light a little bit or trying to or, or trying to be more open. And um. And as in any marriage, you know, I think no matter how liberated women become and how many times a man will say she's in charge or she's this, you know, it's still like I say to my kids, wait till your father gets home. You know, it still has that man, that father, that husband, that man. And I think because she is all this, she is also a little old fashioned at times. And she looks to him now, Mm -hmm. you know, and says or thinks highly of him that she never did. That's as a woman. I and think. I love that she said, do you think Paige knows we love her, right? Yeah, she wasn't and sure. I, I don't think so. And I also love the subtext, but also just the reality of, did you help? Henry study for his test. Yeah, that was great. No, I thought you did. Yeah, and how, I, how how is that not your house or my house? Oh, it is totally, right? Exactly. What do you mean? <laughs> exactly. You, you didn't sign the permission slip. No, you didn't sign the permission slip. Oh my God, we're the worst parents. So, um, Allie, I will tell you uh, when Linda's mom was staying with us, and it was on a Sunday. And Linda pulled out her daytimer, and I pulled out my daytimer. Because mm-hmm. this is before you had smartphones. Mm-hmm. I still have my old daytimer. And we're going, okay, what are you doing? What are you doing? Yep. What are you taking care of, Chris? And Linda's mom said, oh, y'all are busy. And yes. she went to, uh, she went back to Mary and Clay's house because at the time Clay was a firefighter. And he worked 24 on, 48 off. And, you know, Mary worked, you know, four days a week. The same thing. She's a dental hygienist. And, you know, and it was just normal for us to say um, when the phone, you know, when Chris was sick, we looked at each other and go, okay, we'd either say it's your turn or what do you got going on? You know, which one of us is going to be the least disrupted Mm -hmm. about, you know, And, and Chris to this day. Uh, will if he's sick, he will go to work and make them take him home, send him home. Mm-hmm. He's like, you know, I always remember. Okay, Chris, just try to go to school, <laughs> and then yeah. they'll, they'll call me. You know, maybe you'll feel better. Uh, so, um, yeah, I thought that was great, and I I do love the whole because there's no cell phones, there's hardly answering machines. Right. And the way you go, you know, like my husband and I need to postpone deliveries for the weekend. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love that. And yes. I mean, it's that's hilarious, you know? Yeah. Two deliveries. Make sure it was two deliveries. Yes. We have to cancel both deliveries. Yes. I want to stress that, okay? Yes, two, both. Yes. <laughs> so that was really nice. Um the so they start getting better. Elizabeth just – it was just a reaction to the very heavy antibiotics, which was very realistic to me. Ex- um, extremely. Yeah. Um, my son has a heart murmur. No. Oh. The only thing that bothers him on is when he goes for teeth cleaning, he has oh. to take a massive – So do I. Okay. Yeah. I mean it doesn't affect him at all, but you got to take a massive amount of antibiotics. Yes, yeah, so do I. Have make sure you're heart. not Bobby on NYPD Blue. Wow. It is because he, 
they got that. Oh my god, we we still watch that show. Yes. Um, <sighs> so that was before David Caruso was like, yeah. you need to go to jail, uh, right? And pull up his sunglasses. Sorry, yes. we digress. No, that's okay. CSI Miami. Um. <sighs> So they, <laughs> Sorry, you know, I just think of David Caruso. I love David Caruso. Yeah, oh, absolutely. <laughs> and I, I love the idea um, where William talks about you guys don't know what it's like to exactly. do, not have anyone to talk to. Right. Except a series of handlers. Exactly. I mean, yeah. and, and it's true. Like when he looks at them, like after they're at the payphone and he walks across and that whole scene and then in the apartment when he notices – you know, it all starts – you start to watch it all as William watches them, you know, and then when they're in the apartment and he really notices um, Philip looking at her, you know, and he's trying to tend to Gabriel as well as her and, you know, being very fanatical in his, you know, everything with the bag and the cuttings of the, the, the phones and, you know, just being kind of really OCD, you know, is it thorough or is it OCD, I was saying to myself, you know, as I watched it, but you, I think, you know, again – it's like this social experiment. He was there watching this. You know, we were all watching it, you yeah. know, and he totally, you know, he's a man that has been, you know, here in the country, you know, a Russian operative in the country for even longer than they have. He wasn't sent with a spouse, you know, like no. they were. He was sent alone. He's, you know, a bionuclear chemist or, or in that field, which is a very solitary, you know, solitary, lonely field in itself. I do know one or two people that are actually scientists in the field, and it's not exactly, you know, it's not like a big marketing agency. You know, it's very, you're by yeah. yourself, you know. And he sees this. And I think what he also says, I think all these things, you know, show them more of, you know, wow, you know, like we've become a couple. Wow, yeah. we've become this, you yeah. know, we've evolved, we've evolved, whether we knew it or not. And, you know, they get home, Paige is relieved. They go bowling Paige, as Paige a family. Freaking. Yes. Did you not love that old bowling alley? Did I did. That, old bowling alley? that, you know, Elizabeth, oh. everything she does is with intensity. And, everything. And she jokes to Paige, it's part of her spy training. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she, when they were sitting there and she says that, yeah. it was so... So it was such a like, you know, comic relief at that moment, you mm -hmm. know, for Paige. You know what I mean? It was just it was great because, you know, you would never expect of anyone, Elizabeth, to say anything right. funny. She doesn't say anything funny. No, she doesn't. Nothing. No. So let's move on. And to she's, you know, Carrie yeah. Russell's fabulous in the oh, role as well. We haven't said that, but she really is. There is. Yeah, absolutely. She is just amazing. The whole cast is. Yeah. Um, so let's talk let's, about Martha. So, well, I was going to say, I was okay. going to go to the Stan part, but okay, it's, go all, ahead. it's all relevant. No, yeah, no, 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 no. We could, you know. No, I, I love it. Go to Stan. You know, Stan. Okay. You know, like, you know, when you think about him in just, you know, everything from, he's a very, he's intense. Yes. You know, he's intense. But there's a goofiness to Stan also, you know what I mean? Like, you know, when you watch him, you know, and. Um, um, I mean, there uh, was a reason why they they cast Noah Emmerich as uh, uh, Jim Carrey's best friend. Exactly. You know, I mean, he's got that, you know, in the exactly. Truman show, he's got that kind of he's... everyday, you know, kind of normal guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and. um so, you know, Stan, you know, having like I think Stan, you know, with with everything with Agent Gad, with everybody, you know, having to feel like he has to redeem himself now a little bit, you know, and he's on this like, you know, he's on this like mission, you know, for lack of better words, he's on a mission. You know, I'm going to figure this out. There's yeah. something fishy going on. I'm going to figure this out. You know, we have a plan. You know, we have a we have a mole here. You know, there's the entire FBI, but that office with 21 people or whoever there is, you know, are solving all the crimes of counter, you know, of espionage and, you know, counterintelligence, whatever you want to call it. But um, Stan is just on this mission, you know, and how he zeroes in on Martha now and watches Martha and is so intently, you know, um, convinced you know and, and even though he really doesn't know you know he's so 
con- you know, believing that it's something to do with um, Martha. And when he says to, uh, and um, oh God, I'm losing my my train of thought for a minute. When he says to, and do not tell me, um, oh, you're gonna have to tell me, I guess. Um, what's his name, Agent? Um. Oh, the uh, the guy that says, oh, I'll take her to dinner. Right. I won't. Right. No, I won't do that, Stan. Yeah. But I'll take her to dinner. Right. You know. Uh-huh. Um. I forget his name right now, but um. Mm-hmm. You know, when when you see him, you know what I mean, and he's willing to like go to this extent, you know, and going into Martha's apartment, Adderholt, Adderholt. Yes. Adderholt, Adderholt, something like that. Right. That's his name. And um, yeah, Adderholt, yes. Exactly, and you know, and and Stan being, you know, going back to like real field work, you know, and you go and like at first when he was taking those pictures with the Polaroid, I was thinking. Oh, so he's taking all these pictures of his apart- of apartment. Right. But then you realize he was ta- when he fixes the blanket on the couch, you realize he was taking the pictures to cover his own tracks. Right. So he remembered where everything is. Yes. And when he picked up when he opened the second drawer and saw the book on the Kama Sutra with pages turned out. Right. The expressions on his face. Yeah. Because when you think of Allison Wright or Martha, you know, when you think of her, you know. Um, you don't think of the Kama Sutra, you know, you think, no. you know, you, you know, you, Elizabeth, maybe Stan's ex-wife, maybe, you know, there's yeah. like kind of these hottie toddies, you know, when you think of Martha, you do not think that, you know, yeah. and, and, and then learning that she was having an affair with him, you know, when she, you know, she tells a, um, when she's out to dinner and she says, well, I'm having an affair with a married man, you know, it kind of makes a little sense to Stan, but yet he doesn't give up. He doesn't give up. He's convinced. Yeah, it is a great cover story. Um, it explains a lot, and that's why, you know, Philip, Philip um, gave Clark, it to her. Clark, right? Yeah, Clark had told her, yes. Right. Now, what do you think – What I'm a little confused, so I'd like your opinion of what does Martha know and what does she suspect about Clark? Oh, she suspects the worst. Okay. but Oh, she did... suspects the worst. I don't think – but again, we go back to our last conversation mm-hmm. from, you know, from the last episode when Paige told Pastor yeah. Tim that her parents were Russian spies. Right. I don't think anywhere in Martha's thinking, in her realm of thinking, is he a Russian spy. You know what I mean? Yeah. When I say it's the worst, it's like maybe he's – really not what he said he was in the FBI. Well, she already knows that he's not that, but maybe he's, you know, just, he's wanted or he's a bad guy or he's, you know, Mm -hmm. really under deep cover. You know, it's that type of bad. Again, it's nowhere to Russian spy. Yeah. You know that, you know, but she's in love. She's in love. She's, you know, it's the first guy that she's had this, you know, love for and this Mm -hmm. major physical attraction for and you know they seem to have really as elizabeth even asked i want to have the sex that you have with martha you know they seem to have this you know amazing you know physical relationship and 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 she's just a a secretary you know she's a secretary she's a a single woman 80 you know in the 80s a working girl you know going to work living in her one and a half or studio and, and whatever type of apartment, you know, and, um, a mama's girl. And know, they a, a have her dressed, girl. you know, very conservative, conservative. very. Oh, she's. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm not just saying that because it's my name, but she is. Allison Wright is just another fabulous, you yeah. know, fabulous actress. Yes. You know, she she's also just yeah, insane. This is just. You know, they've given her a chance to kind of shine, um, and he's made her, you know, blossom. Yeah. Yeah, and so of course yeah, she does. That's yeah, that's a good word. Yeah. Um, weren't, weren't you – wasn't it odd that Stan didn't find the wedding ring? Yes, it was a little odd. Because she always has it in the drawer right by the door. Right. And she didn't. She wasn't tipped off so much. She had an idea, but she couldn't reach Philip slash Clark, no. you know. So 
it was never shown that she put it in her purse and took it with her. Mm-hmm. It was never, you know, it wasn't alluded to, but like as a viewer and, you know, someone who watches this with, you know, very, you know, and I watch it, you know what I mean? I watch it, you know, I'm like, everybody be quiet. Mm-hmm. You know, I pause, I rewind, you know, if it's somebody yes. coughs in my house, if the floor squeaks, I want to hear every <laughs> word. I've put on the caps before, you know, like the subtitles, because I couldn't understand a word. Oh. You know, I watch it with this intensity. I thought to myself, well, well, how the heck did they not find the wedding ring? It's in the top drawer. I know where the wedding ring is. How does How did they not find it? And I wonder if that's going to be any type, if they're ever even going to touch on that, because that is the only flaw that I've ever seen in this production. So I'm wondering if they're going to touch on that at another time. Maybe he did find it. They didn't show it. Maybe she did have it in her bag. Who knows? And I'm worried we'll about see. I'm worried about Martha. And also, you know, they mentioned several, several times. Well, I found the gun. But I already knew about the gun. Yeah. How did they know about gun. the gun? Yeah. Um, I think I, – I, I don't know. I think they – because Stan said he knew about the gun. Very nonchalant – very matter-of-factly. Yeah. Very matter-of-factly. Yeah. Oh, so I know I about the gun. So it must have been on an earlier um, episode. I don't was, remember it. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. We'll find out. Okay. Inquiring minds want to know. Absolutely. Um. So well, we, we're we're not t- we we're running out of time and we're not yeah. touching on something major. Yes. So let's we, move. We to have Russia. to go back to Nina. <laughs> yeah. Let's move to Russia. Let's go, comrade. <sighs> did you think that was going to happen? Now I listen. If nobody's hurt, never. If you did, okay, we're going to stop right here. Yes. If you have not watched the episode, you have a choice. This is a major spoiler. Yes. Shut the podcast off now and step yes. away from your computer. Because yeah, we're not talking about, you know, Gabriel living. We're not talking about that Elizabeth threw six strikes in a row. I mean, we're talking major spoilers happening. Major. So step away. Yeah. Shut off the podcast. Right. Step away from the computer, the iPod, the droid, whatever you're listening to us on, and go watch the episode. Two, three, three, two, one. Okay. Okay. That you had your chance. Nina. So Nina. Oleg oh. goes to his father and makes a deal. Well, his father dies. Yeah. His brother his dies, brother pardon dies. me. And so he's in the war that Jeff. the war that no one knows is going on. Right. But which and, we know is Afghanistan. Yeah, and they're bitter about that and you know, um His father's like basically saying him Yeah. You know, basically like it should have been you. You know, like this was the good kid. You know, like yeah. you feel that. You feel that. You yeah. feel his father being like and his mad. Father- Go back to your American yeah, life. Yeah, you like staying in that, you know. In the uh, resident aura. Yeah, and 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 Oleg does like the U.S. Of course. He does, you know. He does. He likes his. He's very place. westernized. Yes, and so um, and but he's still pushing for his father to help out Nina. And, right and now, because he's ahead. in love with her. Yeah, and his father's like, look, he's a she's a traitor. Move on. Right. I'm not going to ask about a traitor. Yeah. I'm not going to put myself in a position mm-hmm. over a traitor, his father's basically saying. And then we uh, think they have a deal. This is the evil of this show is when he says, if I can help. Will you stay here? Will you stay? Because you're, For your mother. Yes, for your mother. Very Jewish guilt. Very Jewish guilt. <laughs> And I'm sitting there going, okay, there we go. Right, here we go. They're going yeah. to branch out into something more. Yes. This is how they're going to keep Nina's storyline even going more now that she's in Mother Russia. Absolutely. And then. Yes. And then, you know, when they start reading that off about her, you know, sent it, you know, um, Nina, blah, 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 blah. At first, you think, okay. And then that dream sequence, you knew that you knew when she had that dream sequence. But I again, I watched it with intensity. It was a dream sequence at first. I will you tell didn't. You. I did not. Okay, so then, then you thought this. Let me see if I could read your mind, my Bruce okay. husband. Yes. When they go walking out and you could tell it's Siberia, right? You could yeah. tell it's Siberia. It just right. eludes it. 
Did you think they were walking into, and don't answer this yet, do you think they were walking into the sunrise, or did you think sniper? Seriously. If you, if you really thought it was a dream, did you really think it was going to be that easy for them to walk out holding hands? When, when I saw Siberia, that's when I suspected, oh, wait a minute. This may not really be happening. Okay, because your mind could also go – because I spoke to someone today whose yeah. mind went to Sniper. Yes, <laughs> exactly. And so right? I, okay. Um, and so I did that, and then when she wakes up and you see it's a dream, and it's such dreariness, and oh. she puts on her shoes to mm -hmm. try to make things normal, right? Mm-hmm. And we, then they tell her they were transferring her. Yes. You have been transferred. Yes. Yeah, well, she's been transferred. All and right, then people. they walk, and the guy tells – and I found this after the fact. I went and read a review or an interview with your best friend and the other showrunner <laughs> um, <laughs> that there is a mop bucket – in the corner as she walks in. I didn't see that. I, I, yeah. And they said that was a little bit. And they always have two people on the side. Right, right. Because they always collapse. Right. <laughs> and he said, um, you know, and they actually get her meager belongings and everything. They are set right, in a plastic a, bag like yeah. that. Yeah. You know, and bending down, grabbing her stuff. Yes. Nina Savino, you've been transferred. We come to take you, whatever. Yes. Walking in the hallway, everybody, like you yeah. said, right near her. And then the table is there, you know, with the, what's his name sitting at the table. Yeah. And he says, and he, your, your appeal has been denied. Your, your, your sentence will be carried out shortly. Very shortly. Boom. And she starts Boom. crying, and also they killed her. Yeah, shortly was really shortly. And I, I will had I had to rewind. Well, I had to pause. I had to I pause rewind it go, all the wow. way back to the dream sequence because I'm like, okay, now that I know what's happening, I want to watch this again. And it is so powerful. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, Annette, the actress, sold this so well. Oh. And it's and and it's brilliant storytelling. It is because you know what were they going to do with Nina? She's out of you know the reality is you know she's no longer part of the story. Nope. And to nope. have that brutal death, and according to this interview, and I I will try to find the interview and. And put it in the show notes. They said, you know, they the you know according to the research, they felt like this was the most humane because you. Yeah, I mean, you just said violent. Did you just say violent death? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think so. You didn't think it was violent? No, I think it's pretty like just one, two, three, cut to the chase. But I think of what I think of. I mean, this is just me. When I think of a violent death, I think of something that like is torturous. Okay. You know. You know. Fair enough. Yeah, I think this was just like she didn't even get a chance to blink. You know, yeah. seriously. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it truly was. She, she cried for three seconds and she was dead. Yeah, I mean. She... But then, do you wonder? Yeah. In life, in itself, not just on the show, but do you wonder? Isn't that just an easy death? Don't you think it should, you know, if you're going to, like, say you're branded a traitor and you're done this, it should be more torturous. It should be more. And I guess. Death is, this is the easy way out. And this was their way of being humane. Yeah. Yeah. It is humane. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. I think, you know, a little, I think more of the Russians, I think a little bit more torture, yeah. you know. <laughs> and I, a little bit more, you know. Yeah, and I think that in their way they are trying to be, you know, it's. If you read, um, the person who invented the guillotine actually was doing it because – to be humane. That Exactly. When they would, I've read that. Yeah, when they were trying to do, you know, swords or with these big, um, you know – Stoning. Axes, you know, to chop Stoning off – Stoning someone to death? Work. Right, yeah. So this – Oh, my was, God. Um, 
Oy. So I was, uh, I was shocked. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, you didn't think, you know, if anything, you know, if you thought any major character was going to die in the last few episodes, you thought it was going to be Pastor Tim. You know, you kind of written off that they were going to kill Nina, you know, because they developed her into this story. And then, bam. Bam. Yeah. But I think it's just, it just shows to you that, you know, they're, they're really, you know, they're, it's a, it, they're really interested in telling a story from a real perspective. Mm-hmm. You know, they're not interested in making a soap opera or, or yeah. a, you know, a drama, you know, or any type of thing. They're making this period piece that is very real. Yeah. You know, it's very real for, for as far fetched as it is. It's not really, because if you are one of these people like I am, do you know how many Russian spies were actually, um, you know, within oh, Jesse one second. Sorry. It's okay. <sighs> Hold on one second. Okay. Holy shit. Sorry. My, um, what was it? The um, if, if you understand how many Russian spies all over, it was called the Mitrokian Archive, I think it was, mm-hmm. that came out. Yeah. About these writings. Do you know about this? About these writings? Yes. That came out, and it's unbelievable. It's yeah. unbelievable just how real, how real this really is. Yeah. Yeah. Just something. It's really real. Yeah. It was. It was. Mm-hmm very real um so rest in peace nina can we uh, talk about the male robots some more <laughs> i'm like obsessed with the male robot you're obsessed with the male robots okay i mean i just think the male robot is hilarious yes and i think anybody should like look up it was a recent um thing based on joel fields you know they were him and joe weisberg were in this serious interview for the hollywood reporter it was the Hollywood Reporter, you know, prior to the season starting. And um, they were going back and forth about, you know, these characters and, you know, what are we going to see in this season and um, blah, blah, blah. And um, it was Joel who said we're going to, you know, explore, you know, the um, fascination and the love interests and the, and the, and the, the pain of the male robot. So they created this promo just very recently everyone within the last um 10 days i think maybe two weeks the most and it's called do male robots dream of electric sheep and i think everybody needs to go google that and look it up and we can discuss it at another time after you all do write questions and leave a review and we can discuss it more once you see it okay because it's hilarious okay you have to see it all right i will i'll check it out absolutely Okay. Um, anything else we need to talk about on this one? I think we're good. Okay. Want me to rate it? Uh, yes, I'll let you go first. Nine and a half wigs. Nice. Um, I am going to also go uh, a high rating. I liked it a lot. I am going to go nine and a half Karma Sutra books. Oh, I, just, like, I know. <laughs> it's hilarious. It's like my brother. I, I, it's like common sutra. Uh, how can someone find you, Allie? On Twitter at A Forever New York Girl, and that's A number four E V A N Y G I R L. Best way to reach me. And I am at <gasps> S C Jackson D F W. And uh, 80s Reboot Overdrive uh, is our network. Please go and uh, share the episodes, download them, uh, give us um, a good ratings. We're trying to rebuild comrades on iTunes. So, But I am going to, just for you, Allie, because tonight I'll be on that hill because I mm. can't stop. I'll be on that hill with everything I got. Lives on the line where dreams are found and lost. I'll be there on time and I'll pay the cost. I'm wanting things that only that can only be found in the darkness on the edge of town. In the darkness on the edge of town. It's always a good time for Bruce, and I thought very appropriate for this episode. Love it. Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye. We hope you've enjoyed this show. 
This podcast is part of the 80s Reboot Overdrive channel on Southgate Media Group. You can follow us on Facebook on the 80s Reboot group page. We're also on Twitter and Tumblr at 80s Reboot. We invite you to check out all the wonderful podcasts and blogs available at southgatemediagroup.com. And thank you for reliving the 80s. See, I know you personally, yes, and this is no disrespect, <laughs> yes, but I, the thought of you doing Kama Sutra, <laughs> 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 <laughs>